community partnerships. So far, we've figured out how um, the community will positively affect the student and classroom learning and how to create an inclusive classroom, as well as learning how schools can give back to the community. Now, in this portion, we're gonna learn how the community enhances the learning, of, learning experiences in schools. Now, with that, you would actually be using a little bit more of external sources, such as civic organizations, uh, corporate education programs beyond the school day activities and how these will positively affect a student when it comes to improving their academics. Now, the first thing that I'm going to go over is volunteer mentorship programs. So that would be like the big brother and big sister programs. A lot of those help with peer supports. Um, it is important for a student to feel supported in and outside of school, whether it's from uh, family, friends, or teachers, but of course getting a program that will help a little bit more with peer supports and academics will help the student thrive even better in school. Uh, the next portion, we would have civic organizations. Um, civic organization is an organization which is built through the desire of volunteers to improve their neighborhoods. Now, some of the ones that we had put on here would be like Lions Club, Girls Incorporated, etc. Um, what they do is they actually help with sponsoring the schools by providing funding and resources. Now that is important, especially for low income schooling. Something that may need, be needed in school could be the use of computers and I guess basic pens, pencils, papers, all those needs as well, which will help students learning and academics go even further than having to struggle to find those supports. The next portion would be uh, corporate education programs. Now, a lot of that would be um, businesses helping prepare students for post-school employment. So, such as school scholarships or work experience. Uh, it actually helps improve kids in knowing that when they get out to the workforce, they may have some idea about what's gonna be happening instead of just popping out of high school, hoping for the best and struggling then. So it helps build that bridge a little bit further for them. And next there is some uh, beyond the school day activities, such as extracurriculars, um, anything that kind of goes along with that. So we have sports clubs, we have summer camps, we have GSAs. Another thing that is a good one is preschools. So it's that preparation for school, helping kids get integrated socially. Um, you have the summer camp portion, which is helping kids with that two month gap. Um, that'll help, just help with socialization more or less, but it'll also help break down that two month gap so that they aren't forgetting what they're learning in school. Uh, when they come back. Um, GSA and sports clubs. Now a lot of those are you're getting socialization and support from your peers. Um, you also get a, like a widened perspective for um, community and life. Um, it just also helps with uh, improving academic achievements. And then lastly, we have uh, the social services for at-risk youth. Um, that would be another thing that we'd be looking at, such as outreach, mental health, parent youth programs. Um, all this will help uh, prevent future prog problems for at-risk students. Um, it helps support some youth engagement and it creates a com accommodating and inclusive learning. And uh, all these programs bu build stepping stones up to the success which can improve a child's um, academics and in turn improve many other uh, aspects within schools. Thank you.